Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So to all participants, please kindly wait for a few minutes because we are still waiting for the other participants to join our Zoom meeting. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Dr. Joyce. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to all the participants. Good morning from Indonesia and welcome to all of you to the third international conference on Islamic education studies and social science organized by Research Synergy Foundation held today on July 6, 2021. Okay, next slide please. Yeah, before we start our conference today, I would like to inform to all the participants, both the presenters, the attendee, to kindly fill the attendance form, as you can see in the screen, and also the committee also already typed in the Zoom chat box. So please kindly uh, fill the form of the attendance forms. Yeah, before we start, so I would like to brief a little bit about this conference. So the third international conference on Islamic education studies and social science held by Research Synergy today on July 6, 2021. So the aim of this conference is to bring together leading academicians, researchers, and scholars to exchange and share their thoughts and findings in various spectrums in the field of Islamic education and also social science. And this conference, the third ICS, is shows up as also the cutting edge research platforms to get a presentations and discussion of recent achievements by the researchers in the academic research. Okay. So once again, welcome to the all participants for today's conference, the third ISIS. We have six countries represented in this conference from Indonesia, Malaysia, Nepal, Pakistan, Philippines, and India. So once again, welcome to all of you in third ISIS. And regarding the abstract book and also the conference program, as you can see in the screen, is, of, is available in this GDRAC link and also in the email of the meeting link that we already sent before the conference day. So uh, inside this GDRAC link, there is a conference program, the abstract book, and also the uh, virtual presentation guideline and also the virtual background. And we also encourage to all of the participants, both the presenters and also the attendees to use the virtual background later on so we can have a good and nice uh, e-group photo later. So you can access all the virtual backgrounds and also the materials of the presenters in this link. And we also already type it in the chats so you can uh, refer to that link. And regarding the question and answer and also the certificates, 
please remind that the question and answer can only be asked via Zoom chat room and the session chair later on. So we already have Dr. Joyce, Dr. Joyce Tyrit from the Holy Angel University. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Joyce, for being with us today. So the session chair will manage as per the time available. So please write your questions and also the name of the presenter that should answer it. And regarding the e-certificates, and the e-certificates will be provided to your registered email after the session for the participant who complete and actively involved in presenting the paper or asking the question or give feedback in the sessions because we believe that through the knowledge sharing and also uh, the knowledge sharing and also through the scientific forum we can learn each other we can and we can share the value together and once again, please kindly fill the registration and attendance form that already sent via Zoom chat box. Okay. And for the video and audio, a place to all the participants are required to mute their audio and the host has every right to mute any participants audio and remove who are deemed disruptive without warning to maintain the conducivity of this conference today. Yeah, this is the overall conference program of today, the 30 ICs. So after this welcoming address, we will have the Global Research Ecosystem Introductions by Dr. Hendra Tidwi Molyaningsi as the founder and chairman of Research Synergy Foundation. And then we will have the group photo sessions. And then we will have the online presentation session that will lead by Dr. Joyce Lin Direct from Holy Angel University, Philippines. And then after that, we will have this. Is, uh, we will have some uh, discussion sessions, and then we will close by the post conference information and also awarding certificate for the presenter of today conference. Okay. Yeah, this is the information that should be really pay attention to all the presenters, to all the author who already submitted their abstract and later on submit their full paper in the systems so please refer to this timeline for the publication timelines so after this we will have in day plus seven we will have uh, to to process your full paper of revisions so day plus seven starting from today is july 13th you have at, at last you have to uh, send your full paper, your final full paper, if you want to be included in the further journal recommendation that will be given to you based on the reviewer, and it will be look at the scientific uh, scientific uh, process, and we will see for the context, the content, and also the, the suitable with the scope of the journal that will be given to you. So please uh, kindly meet the timeline. If you send your full paper more than that timeline which is the uh, day plus seven july 13 so we cannot accommodate your full paper anymore to the publication process so please uh, please uh, pay attention to this timeline because there will be another second round of scientific review we will check again the plagiarism check of your full paper and then later on the article review process and then giving the journal recommendation and after that you have to make a confirmations on your scholar vein account whether you are agree or disagree with the journal recommendation given because at day plus 57 or at, at uh, around 3rd September so we will close the time of the publication opportunity so this timeline also we will update and we will put it in the website in case you uh, you are forget about it okay next slide please Yeah, okay, we go to the first agenda of today conference. We would like to invite Dr. Hendrati Dwi Mulyaninsi as the founder and also the chairman of the Research Synergy Foundations. But before she start to delivering the global research ecosystem introduction, I would like to read her profile first. 
So Dr. Hendra Tidwi Mulyaningsi is the chairman and founder of Research Synergy Foundation, and she has shown a great commitment on creating the global network and research ecosystem. And this uh, global research ecosystem has been developed since 2017 up to the present and having increasing number of the num of the participants or the member around the globe for more than 15,000 members. And her passion in how to create impact and co-creation value among all the stakeholders of RSF has made her focus on upholding the integrity in the scientific process through enhancement of RSF support systems like Reviewer Track, Scholar Way, Research Synergy Institute, and RSF Press. Thus, her work in this area has made her as the nominee of Impactful Leadership Award from Talberg Foundation, Swedia 2019. As a lecturer, she has been working in the university since uh, 2008 at prison in Indonesia as assistant professor and she holds her doctoral science of management graduated from School of Business and Management Institute of Technology Bandung or SBM ITB and she has strong interest to her research project as well as her research field in social entrepreneurships, social innovations and knowledge management. And as researcher, her work studies and research on this research field made her being invited as a reviewer in many reputable scopus and also WOS indexed journals, and also as a keynote speakers in many international conferences in Philippines, Thailand, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, Australia, Japan, and also US. She also has shown her great patience on writing her research study into some book chapter, paper, and contemporary scientific articles that has already been published in Springer, Emerald, Taylor & Francis, and in many reputable international journals and publishers. And this terrific association between her professional experience as a lecturer, a researcher, the certified trainer and coach combined with her wider horizon on networking in the research area made her establish the strong commitment on having global learning platform to accelerate knowledge through many workshop and research coaching in Research Synergy Institute as one of the RSF support systems. Really great achievements. So please welcome Dr. Hendrati to give the introductions. Okay, thank you, Miss Santi, uh, for your brief uh, introduction about me. And Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning to all of you. I do hope that all of the participants here, the presenter, and also the attendee, and also our beloved and honorable session chair, uh, stay healthy and also stay, stay safe in uh, during this pandemic era. So I do hope that all of you uh, still keep uh, the spirit that uh, we can do, we can fight for this COVID-19. Okay, so uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you for the, all of the committee that uh, allowing me to introduce regarding with the global research ecosystems. On behalf of Research Synergy Foundations, I would like to introduce you because uh, once you're entering our programs, uh, all of our programs, including this conference, so it means that you are uh, being a part of our a uh, big family, I mean like our global research ecosystem family. So uh, next please. Okay, so who we are? Uh, research Synergy Foundation is a digital social enterprise platform uh, and we are focusing on developing global research ecosystem toward outstanding global scholars. And we try to build a collaborative network among the scholars and uh, especially for the researchers, lecturers, and also practitioners globally that uh, they come uh, into this uh, hub or into this event uh, to realization of the knowledge accelerations and also uh, giving the impact for the society and contribute more for the society and humanity through their research. Okay, next please. Yeah, and uh, as the social enterprise, uh, the tipping point of why we are here is because we found there are a lot of challenges, uh, in, uh, especially in the particular challenges in the higher education regarding with the publications, because we found that many researchers, particularly in developing countries, they have a limited opportunity and also access in the knowledge sharing medium. And then uh, they, they sometimes they also have a less, re, uh, less feedback, a received less feedback uh, from their writing to enhance and when they come with uh, when they are joining uh, some some kind of scientific forum as like conference symposium and etc 
So uh, it means that uh, they don't have enough opportunity to enhance their quality or improving their uh, research paper. And then uh, writing and publishing in high impact journals uh, is often discouraging and also there are still huge gap uh, between editorial requirement and also author capacity. As we know that uh, our stakeholder is not only the authors and also the participant in our, uh, in our uh, activity, in our programs, but also the publisher and editors is also one of our, edit, uh, our stakeholders. So in here, we try to minimize that gap by having uh, some kind of support, support system, uh, it's like learning platform support system that will help all the members to enhance their quality of publications. And then uh, in the other hand, uh, uh, when we talk regarding with the strategic plan of the university, we found that uh, some of university or most of university, especially in ASEAN country, uh, managing international journal need comprehensive mechanism to accelerate the process uh, into or toward reputable journals that will be uh, indexed in reputable indexer. So we found that there are a lot of uh, university that they cannot manage their international journals and because they don't, they don't know how to uh, index it in a reputable indexer and they don't know how to fulfill the requirement. For example, uh, for the diversity of each volume of their uh, journal and also uh, the continuity of, of each volume. So they don't have any mechanism of that. And then uh, this is the solutions that we offer and we try to tackling uh, to all of that challenge uh, by having this uh, Research Synergy Foundation Global Ecosystem. Uh, we try to provide comprehensive and integrated support system that I would like to uh, explain in detail after this to create global research ecosystem. So uh, from this support system, we try to create the global research ecosystem that will facilitate all of you, the members, to process and enable all of you uh, to accelerate the knowledge and also to, con to contribute more to the society and humanity through your research. Okay, next, please. Okay, so this is how do we work. So this is our global research ecosystem from our four uh, support systems. So we have scholar friends. So uh, right now, uh, once you are entering our programs, for example, for this conference, after you submit into our scholar friends, so all of your paper has already been reviewed by our review track. So uh, this review track is one of our support system that also embedded with scholar friends. And review tech right now is already being supported and accommodated more than uh, 1,000 1, feet of study and also supported but right now more than 2,000 reviewers from all around the globe. And uh, the this, this scholar fan itself is already served more than uh, 4,000 members from uh, all around the globe also. So actually this data is not updated yet uh, uh, because uh, right now we have more than uh, 20 conference in this 2021 first. So it, uh, it means that uh, it will be always uh, developed for, for, for and also gay, uh, we have increasing numbers of the members in Scholopen and also in review tracks. And uh, when we see that uh, there are a huge gap among uh, between uh, editorial requirement and also the author capacity based on our experience and analysis since 2017. So we, we, build, we try to build and create a learning platform support system. It's, uh, and the name is uh, Research Synergy Institute. And right now, uh, Alhamdulillah, there are more than 13,000 scientific participants that already involved and engaged with all of us. Uh, in uh, some kind of uh, programs as like a uh, workshop uh, and they are involved in, in, in more than 60 workshops, uh, more than 10 coaching and online webinars that, that also conducted not, all in, not only in Indonesia, but also in all around the world. Okay, then it is also involving uh, more uh, with more than 400 university and institution as their affiliations. And then uh, the fourth support system is SFRS that try to support and helping uh, university because uh, we, uh, to, to enhance uh, the quality of their international journal actually, because we have a lot of uh, conference and also we have a reviewer track and also we have a learning platform to enhance the quality of the paper itself. So this mechanism and this uh, support system also helping uh, the university to having uh, reputable in uh, international journal because uh, the diversity could come from our conference because our conference mostly uh, also conducted not only in Indonesia before pandemic, we are conducted in, in more than 15 countries actually. 
and uh, right now we have more than 12 international journal and four of them will be uh, submitted into Scopus in this in this in this year okay next please okay so this is how we do create the value and impact among our stakeholders uh, when we know that there are a challenge in higher education related with the research and publication and then we try to create the support system we creating a scholar fan because we know that uh, many researchers but in particularly in developing countries because they have limited opportunity and access in knowledge sharing medium so that's why we create uh, we create a scientific forum as like on this conference and then uh, the and we creating scholar fan as one of our support system that make it uh, all of you having the process of scientific becomes a uh, uh, is, when we call it, uh, we, we try to uphold the integrity by everything is already uh, already there. For example, your your uh, paper uh, when when being reviewed and also when when it is being uh, re uh, recommended to to the journal, it's already mentioning in your system in Scholarvent actually. So this is uh, the way how we try to giving all the. Uh, authors or our participants uh, giving the feedback and also uh, very comprehensive uh, information uh, through the scholar friend or through the system. So every step of your process of the scientific process is already uh, informed in, in that system. And also uh, regarding with the international journals, we, we also uh, know that uh, many of university, they are asking our help and support regarding with how to uh, make like a uh, uh, reputable in international journal by uh, meeting the requirement from the reputable indexer as like Scopus. So we would like to, uh, we would like to giving them easiness, uh, for example, because we have a lot of, uh, a lot of conference. So it means that the diversity of the paper is can come from another country uh, that come, uh, that are already involved in our, international uh, conference. So this is the value co-creation that we try to create uh, among uh, stakeholders. So there are university, association, author, and also editors. So once the editor also uh, try to communicate with us regarding with what kind of requirement that they need to, to be fulfilled uh, for the authors. So uh, we have a platform for the learning platforms. I mean, like we have a hub uh, a hub you're creating the support system or a hub for that so this is about the it is between editorial requirement and also the author capacity so if you as an author need to be published in reputable indexed journal so it means that you have to know regarding with the requirement so that's why uh, through this research synergy institute we try to help the authors to meet the requirement of the editor itself so this this is uh, what we what we call it value co-creation that we create among our stakeholder. So we do hope that uh, we will create also the social impact among all of the stakeholder because uh, the editor also satisfied with the requirements uh, that already fulfilled by the authors and the author can publish uh, their papers into uh, the journal that are already the research or already recommend by our uh, our system and also all, uh, the association and university also they can get the impact by uh, increasing the rank of the university or being recognized in the global uh, in the global ecosystem so it means that uh, this is kind of impact that we try to uh, giving back to all of the uh, stakeholder and also the member so we do hope that uh, we will create the same value among all of our stakeholder after we uh, after this this uh, journey Okay, next please. Yeah, so this is the review process that we already been going through. Uh, so once the manuscript is going to the scholar friends, they are uh, checking for the plagiarism. So this is the way how we try to upholding the integrity actually, because in here, the editorial also see all of the process of this. So once they can see that uh, we are really focused and really serious uh, taking care of getting with the scientific process, so they will see that, uh, all of the paper that come from the RSF, also one of the paper that will be considered more because uh, it is already being going through uh, our initial process in their review and also will helping the editorial for their initial review. Okay, and next please. 
and this is our international conference that already being uh, conducted uh, that will be also conducted by uh, our scholar friends and it is supported by our scholar friends and mostly will be also uh, submitted into our fifth uh, support system uh, F1000 Research Gateway uh, at SF Gateway. So I will uh, explain regarding with the, our fifth uh, support system after this. Okay, next please. And then this is also one of uh, our uh, reason why we are creating Research Energy Institute, our learning uh, platform, our, because as, as we know that uh, based on our analysis, uh, our research since 2017 and 2021, with more than 3,005 paper that already being, being submitted into our uh, system. So we found there are some kind of gap. Uh, so uh, there are uh, as like author uh, language, research quality, content packaging, cost FPC, and etc. So from this one, we try to minimize that gap through this uh, learning platform. Okay, next please. Okay, so this is our uh, journal. Uh, international journals that already embedded with uh, that also embedded with a uh, university partner that join with us uh, they, that collaborate with us for example with university of terbuka uh, Unsas terbuka and then university Un, uh, of pajajaran and then stea uh, surakarta and upn yogyakarta uh, university of unisba bandung and then also um, crms is one of the association uh, that focusing on uh, research uh, risk management and also uh, there are some uh, some journal that uh, not also uh, involving with the uh, university but also independently uh, owned by research Synergy foundation and alhamdulillah right now there are four uh, journal international journal that will be submitted into scopus and most of this journal is already being indexed in doig and also copernicus okay next please yeah, and this is also uh, some of our conference proceeding and our conference proceeding not only uh, collaborate with uh, uh, SSF Press, uh, I mean like not only with SSF Press, but also collaborate with another publisher as like CSC Berkema, Rotlist, and also Site Press. And uh, right now we will we will also index it in the OAG for all of our uh, proceeding Paper, uh, proceeding books uh, under RSF Press. Okay, next please. Okay, so this is our fifth uh, support system that uh, uh, that are already creating uh, since 2020. Actually, why the fifth? Because this is the youngest support system that we create because since 2020, uh, F1000 research already being owned by uh, Taylor and Francis. And in that time, uh, we, uh, they try to inform us. Uh, they, they are informing us as uh, one of the uh, one of the gateway uh, that will promote multidisciplinary uh, research articles. Okay, then it is already indexed in Scopus, and this platforms uh, is open science platform. Okay, next please. Okay, so uh, Alhamdulillah, me and Miss Santi and also Miss Ani, the founder of our Research Synergy Foundations, is also the uh, advisory gateway of this gateway uh, F1000 research. And uh, we try to assist and also to, uh, to giving support and help for all of the authors that will submit into this gateway. So we welcome all of you also, if you are interested to be submitted, uh, to be uh, your paper to be submitted here or to be published here. So please uh, welcome and then we will try to, we will try our best, we do our best to support all of you. Okay, next please. Okay, so uh, this RSF Gateway not only published the original research paper, uh, but also we are published a novel academic poster slide and also document. So if you have a, like for example, competition for your students, so for example, ideal battle regarding with the business competition or something like that, and the output of that uh, competition is a poster. So you can publish also in this uh, platform. So uh, please welcome. And also you can browse in, in our uh, official uh, our, our website of F1000 Research. So they are already there. 
and then uh, we are also promoting and publish uh, all across research field including social science economics business management humanity including law uh, engineering and also medical studies okay so this is and also once one thing that uh, very important all the articles paper especially the articles have undergone should be undergone uh, the RSF publication preparation process as like now uh, once you already uh, undergone in RSF uh, publication process uh, as like our review process so it means that you are already uh, you are already having our recommendations and then we will giving you recommendation letters if if it is eligible to be published and then uh, it can become your cover letter before you uh, submit into this gateway okay okay and then next please so this is our partner alhamdulillah it will be more to come actually uh, this partner is officially already having mou signing with a uh, research Negi foundation and it come from a lot, uh, all around the world and it will be more to come because right now uh, uh, still uh, ongoing on uh, bureau uh, on, on permit or etc or as like video creation in the university and also in associations so it will be more to come it will be more 20 more to come in this years so uh, we do hope that uh, we, this collaboration also among scholars among university among stakeholders it could increasing uh, the impact uh, into uh, among of, among among stakeholders because uh, from this uh, collaboration also we have a lot of program that involving all of our international pat partner and we are involving together in one program for example in uh, in last uh, last two weeks we have conference and uh, most of the session chair is supported by all of the partner from in, uh, from uh, within global research ecosystem of FSF and they come from all around the world so this is kind of the way how we try to giving the diversity and also uh, the impact to their to their uh, conference because the insight from another country the insight from the diversity perspective it will help to enhance the quality of the researcher itself okay so please welcome to all of you if your university need to collaborate with us and help uh, and we need uh, and you all need uh, our support please uh, just contact me santi and also you can chat box uh, chat in the chat box and then uh, we will, we will uh, try to reach you and uh, help you okay so uh, at, uh, at last but not the least welcome to our global research ecosystem welcome to our big family through this conference welcome wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Hendrati, for giving us a very comprehensive introduction on the global research ecosystems. So we're continuing to the next agenda, which is the group photo, right? Okay, so I would like to ask to all of the participants of today's conference, the presenters, the attendee, please kindly turn on the video so we can have really good photos. Okay, just wait a minute. Okay. Wait. Okay, still have the time. You still have the time to open your cam. Okay. 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 So now I will count on one to three. Okay, everybody, look at your device. One, two, three. Smile. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all the participants today, and hopefully this really good vibes and your uh, big smiles also can bring a lot of uh, positive yeah positive support during this kind of pandemic situations so thank you once again thank you so much for all the participants of today conference and we will continue to the, our next agenda which is the main session of today conference the online presentation sessions but before we start the online presentation sessions i would like to introduce 
our honorable and beloved session chair of our colleague, Dr. Joycelyn Dyrich from Holy Angel University, Philippines. Before that, uh, allow me to read your profile first. Okay, Dr. Joycelyn Sijat Dyrich is experienced in education and corporate consultancy with a demonstrated history of working in the education management industry. She has a Bachelor of Science in Commerce, major in Business Administration's degree from the University of Santo Tomas and postgraduate degree at Angeles University Foundation. She is currently taking her second doctorate at the University of the Visayas, Philippines. And then she is a currently a guest lecturer at the Graduate School of Business of Holy Angel University, Northwestern University, and University of the Visayas. Program Consultant of Families for Tomorrow Service and Business Development Consultant of FMAKE Singapore, a project consultant of Global Professional Advancement Philippines. And she is an accredited reviewer for Junior Achievement Philippines for RMP and RBP and is a member of the Regional Quality Assessment Team or RQAT of the Commission on Higher Education Region 3. She is the Corporate Secretary of the Pampanga Research Organization or PREO, blind peer reviewer of five internationals, three five international journals and three local journals. And Dr. Dyeret considered herself as a neophyte in the field of research. Thus, she continued to upskill. Her paper on work-life balance and employee engagement received a best paper or presentation award and was published thereafter in the Scopus Indexed Journals. So once again, thank you so much, Dr. Joyce Lin, for being with us today. And it is an honor for all of us to have you as the session chair of today's conference. Now I will pass this session to you. Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you for that kind introduction, Santi. Uh, so generous of you. Okay, anyway, um, uh, good morning, researchers, scholars, presenters, and guests. Uh, once upon a time, I was also uh, one of you, you know, that was my first uh, international presentation when I, in, uh, in Australia in 20. I think that was in 2019, no? And um, mind you, uh, scholars, researchers, presenters, and guests, it was the start of my research journey with RSF, okay? So I really owe a lot, no? To uh, research synergy. And again, let me welcome everyone to the third international conference on Islamic education studies and social science, okay? I know you are all excited to do your presentations, but before that, let me present to you the different tracks we have for this morning. First is we have the political science track, of which there will be one presenter, and then we have the international relations, social science, Islamic studies, and sustainable development. Okay, now Presenters are given 15 minutes inclusive of the Q&A, okay? And I will prompt you once you reach 10 minutes to wrap up, okay? And attendees, please type in your questions related to the paper, of course, on the chat box, okay? Now, let us start with the first presenter on political science. Are you ready? All right, so the first presenter is Fayed Sharoni, and his, uh, the paper is entitled Government Policy in Dealing with Forest Fire, Case Study Aceh Rabin. Okay, so this is exciting. Uh, Faez, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. You may start now. Can we give Papa S a virtual uh, encouragement? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, hello. Good morning. Hello. 
Good morning, everyone. We thank you for the opportunity given to us to present our paper. Uh, previously, allow us to introduce ourselves from the University uh, of Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. My name is Faiz Yaroni and others in including Eko Priya Purnomo, Lubna Salsabila, Akil Teguh Fatani, and Nafia Amirah Azmi. We'll present a paper entitled The Impact of Media Narratives on Government Policy in Tackling Forest and Land Fairs in Indonesia. The study Aceh Province. This presentation will be divided into five parts, starting from the introduction, methods, findings, and discussion, conclusion, and question, and answer session. The hazard parameters from the general guidelines for disaster risk assessment and other references from other related ministries agencies at the national level are changed to evaluate the potential for forest and land fair disasters in Aceh province, among others. The sizable potential threat of forest and land fairs in Aceh province is calculated based on evaluating uh, these parameters. As shown here, uh, table one shows the danger level of uh, land and forest fairs in Aceh province. This shows that almost every district city has a fairly high impact of forest and land fairs. Only three districts and one city had a moderate impact. This section describes the total hazard area in Aceh province is uh, 4,072 million ha. According to the results of the potential hazard area estimate above, the total is calculated from a recapitulation of 20 two districts cities that can be impacted by forests and then fairs. According to the danger area, the hazard class is determined by analyzing the highest hazard class in each district uh, region, indicating that the hazard class for forests and land fairs in Aceh province is high. The study looks at how policies on forest and land fair management are portrayed in five national news outlines. The media narratives supplied by policy actors can be used by the government to inform policy decisions on the forest, fair, uh, forest and land fairs in Aceh province. The study was uh, the study was carried out in Aceh province. Articles from tribunnews.com, republica.co.id, kompas.com, antaranews.com, and liputansik.com were used to compile these reports data between 2016 and 2020. The articles collected cover news. Uh, about forest and land fairs. The study used qualitative anal analysis uh, techniques which help research better understand a phenomenon by making it possible to investigate it. It is often used to evaluate an uh, event in a limited sense. An online news review on one of the leading social media platforms is the subject of this research. And we were uh, 12 plus width and capture feature is used to systematically monitor and anal uh, analyze 
online news by visiting and accessing online news data is obtained. The online news data obtained is then processed by coding and using indicators uh, to evaluate the change in policies developed and other relevant indicators. From the table above, the most discussed is forest and land fair control policies, 32% uh, at antaranews.com, 26% uh, at compass.com, 6% uh, at liputansik.com, 1% at republica.co.id, and 13% uh, at, at tribunews.com. Forest and land fairs are to blame for the policy problems identified in this report. These issues stem from the people who do the actual burning, the campaigns whose land is burned, and the behavior of the government. Alternative policy options can be quickly solved if forest and land fair policies are problematic. Policy narratives initiated by actors, uh, decisions makers, and community leaders can reveal problems. At the heart of the policy narrative is the discussion of policy issues. Based on figure one, the most discount indicators in online media coverage are technology and infrastructure. 100.00% and compass.com, 100.00% uh, at republica.co.id, and 100.00% antaranews.com. Then the control policy in the Qatar Karhutla was the most discussed at uh, 61. 11% on antaranews.com, 42.00% on liputansik.com, 38.89% uh, on tribunnews.com, and compass.com, 36.73%. Uh, the most talk about uh, community involvement indicators were 28.57% uh, on antaranews.com, 28.00% on liputansik.com, 21.11% uh, on tribunnews.com. 14.29% uh, on compass.com and 9.21% on republica.co.id. Furthermore, the most talk about land and uh, livelihood indicators were 74.00% uh, at liputansik.com. 73.81% uh, at antaranews.com, 68.89% uh, uh, at tribunnews.com, 74% uh, uh, at compass.com, and 27. Uh, point 63% at republica.com.co.id. Finally, the most talk about squad and fair control indicators were 100.00% and tribunnews.com and liputansik.com 21.27% uh, on antaranews.com. 70.07% uh, on compass.com and 42.11% on republica.co.id.
the section try to find out the news narratives spread on social media about forest and land fairs. In this case, and in this case, using global cloud analysis. In this case, the analysis section is in figure two. The image above illustrates that the news of forest and land fairs that are the most discussed in Aceh province are forest and land fairs in Aceh Barat and Nagan Raya. Issues that play a role include government, community cooperation in dealing with fair haze that covers the environmental village and sub districts. Carla also bore tens of hectares of land, making it a disaster point. Issues that develop in government also increase government activities in forest and land fairs. This increase uh, proves that the government is actively working on very various kinds of activities and other activities. The government also use the news to communicate and coordinate with uh, local agencies or agencies to support government performance and become a means of information for the public. The result uh, of the cluster analysis, interaction and communication, as well as the synergy between the government and the community from the sub district to the village can be seen in figure three. The, occur the occurrence of foreign a forest and land fairs in Aceh province is caused by the haze that often occur, uh, occurs in Aceh Barat and Nagaraya districts. Land damage does not only occur in districts but has spread to sub districts to village. The former synergy from the central regional to village governments can narrow the spread of forest and land fairs uh, hotspots. Gangulation. Many narratives have an uh, effect on forest and land tenure policies according to the findings. The government's inability to take appropriate action against the offenders the slash that is uh, judicial uh, procedure and the fact that the majority of case uh, were found to have valid statutory laws on a state community led were all overlooked. As a result of the spread of heads in West Aceh and Dagaraya districts, forests and land fairs broke out in Aceh province. Land damage occurs not only in sub-districts but also in village and sub-districts. Forest and land fairs can be contained uh, with uh, government cooperation at all levels from national to regional to village. That's all from our presentation. Thank you for your attention. Please, if you have any question, we would love to hear your feedback and comments about our presentation. Thank you for that, Paez. So um, there are uh, a few questions here and, uh, uh, and an acknowledgement. First, I will first read the question, okay? So, uh, Mr. Paez, your research is very interesting, no? and um, what can we infer or conclude from the percentage explanation in figure one and suggestions? Uh, better to translate the term written in figure two and figure three into English language so global readers can understand your finding better. So that is from um, uh, Santi. No? The, uh, she has uh, two. Uh, she has one question and one recommendation. The first question is: What can you infer or conclude from the percentage explanation in Figure One? Maybe you can show the uh, Figure One. Yeah, 
client. What can you uh, conclude from the percentage explanation? Okay, thank you for the question. The figure one show the percentage uh, narrat of narrative media uh, to give information to about the life uh, plan fire and uh, plan uh, fire uh, fires uh, Aceh province. So uh, we analyze uh, media um, what 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 can you conclude once if you're looking at the figure um, what can you um, uh, say about it what's the um, conclusion when you look at the figure from the figure one uh, yes from figure one uh, most of the media focus on the community and its involvement okay. along, uh, along along with the policy implemented mm -hmm. and, and also uh, the, the, the figure one uh, analyzes from the because of uh, figure one uh yeah uh i i think um his co uh um researcher is raising his hand echo prior yes uh yes. thank you very much hey how are you yes. um yes. Thank you very much for the question and the comment. The first one, if we're talking about the figure one, the type figure one, we can look at upon the pattern who actually yes. in the media concern about the forest fire. So for example, mm -hmm. in the figure one, we can see on the right hand side for the Tribune news, most of the yes. news the tribunes, they only focus on uh, community involvement, mm -hmm. the highest. And the second one, they focus on the land and livelihoods something like that so actually okay. figure one is very clear enough to ex to so understand about what is the news talking about in terms of the five issue mm -hmm. this is the first one and the second one uh, i do agree about to revise the next figure figure two three yeah. something like in english and also in language yes we will do and revise this in English properly. Thank you. Okay, okay, thank you. And then also, I have one question. Um, because this is a qualitative method of research, right? What challenges did you encounter while doing this research? Huh? Did you? Uh, what challenges did you encounter while doing your research? Uh, yes. Or yes. A, a, uh, when yes, we're talking people. about the challenges uh, yes, in yes. this data, firstly, we have to do several uh, methods to make sure that mm -hmm. all the data that we got from the social media and also for the news, it's valid. So that's why we only mm -hmm. choose the reputable, the most reputable news. This is the first one. Okay. Second one, we okay. do mixed method between NPFO and also uh, we use uh, the NPFO and BLS. Okay. So when we have okay. those data, we can compare. So we can make sure okay. that those data is valid as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Do you do we have uh, any other question? Yeah. Okay. okay. Somebody uh, said that your presentation is good. Your thank you very paper. much thank you very okay, much looking so forward to meeting you and also collaborate with all of you bye yeah yeah thank you very much and uh, since we don't have any more questions no uh, let us give the uh, virtual uh, uh, acknowledgement to the uh, presentation of paes and company and um,
Yeah, with the title, The Impact of Media Narratives on Government Policy Impacting Forest and Land Fires in Indonesia. Okay, now we go to the second track, which is on international relations. Okay, so the paper, the title of the paper is Indonesia Defense Diplomacy Against the United States, China in the South China Sea, as an effort to create peace in the region. Um, the presenter is Gerald Theodorus Turuan. Gerald, are you ready? Okay, okay can you hear me? All right. Yes, okay. loud and clear. Uh, very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today, today I will uh, try to present my paper. Actually, uh, this paper is uh, made from uh, two two person. Two person, and I will try to present Indonesia defense diplomacy against the United States, China in the South China Sea as an effort to create peace in the region. Uh, I'm the researcher from Research and Development Agency, Ministry of Defense. Republic of Indonesia, and also I am the doctoral student from Indonesia Defense University. Next, before I present this paper, I will try to divide it into three scope. This paper first is introduction. Second is result and discussion. And the third, the last is the conclusion. Next. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, as we know, uh, Indonesia is a free and active foreign policy, or in Indonesia said, in Bahasa said, Indonesia adalah suatu negara yang Bebas aktif, memiliki doktrin luar negeri bebas aktif. Based on, berdasarkan Undang-Undang Dasar Negara Republik Indonesia tahun 1945. Our Foreign Minister, Retno Marsudi, said that free is to decided movement. Bebas melakukan hubungan luar negeri ke negara manapun and active active is to contribute solving work cases aktif dalam hal di sini adalah aktif untuk memberikan kontribusi menyelesaikan masalah-masalah uh, dunia solving work cases ladies and gentlemen in international relations, diplomacy is an important instrument to protect and reach national interest. Diplomasi adalah instrumen penting untuk melindungi dan mencapai kepentingan nasional. As I said before, Indonesia diplomacy must be for national interest. Based on the preamble, uh, Gerald, excuse me, yeah. uh, because we are hearing a lot of noise in the background. Uh, I don't know if, uh, yeah, uh, can you help us because we are uh, hearing uh, noises uh, uh, in your background. Uh, maybe you can help us with that. Okay, so um, maybe... Uh, Okay. Okay. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay now. Yes, we can hear you. 
Oke, okay, uh, I will try to repeat from from uh, the beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, Indonesia is a free and foreign active policy. Atau dalam bahasa Indonesia-nya dikatakan bahwa Indonesia menganut doktrin politik luar negeri bebas aktif. Ms. Retno Marsudi, our foreign minister, said that free is to decided movement and active contribute solving world cases. Diplomacy is an important instrument to protect and reach national interest. For Indonesia, the implementation of diplomacy must be for national interest based on the preamble of national regulation berdasarkan pembukaan Undang-Undang Dasar Negara, Negara Republik Indonesia tahun 1945. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to reach national interest, one of the diplomacy style is a defense diplomacy. Salah satu model diplomasi adalah melalui diplomasi pertahanan. Defense diplomacy was a concept created by England through strategic defense review on 1998. Next. Indonesia Defense Fed Paper 2008 said that Indonesia has a active defense atau memiliki strategi pertahanan defensif aktif. Profesor Marsetio said that South China Sea conflict is the biggest security challenge in Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia is the strategic region also facing maritime challenge. South China Sea conflict made making wars with the United States present with their freedom of navigation policy atau kebijakan pelayaran bebas dari negara Amerika Serikat. There is a rivalry between US and China in South China Sea. Terjadi rivalitas antara Amerika dan China di, South Chin di Laut Cina Selatan. US and China show force, show force their military movement in South China Sea. US-China rivalry give an impact to ASEAN. This US-China rivalry is a threat to regional security stabilization. Next. Okay, jump to result and discussion. What Indonesia do from for defense diplomacy? There are a DMM, ASEAN Defense Ministerial Meeting, Defense Cooperation, and etc. In KTT ASEAN 37, Ms. Retno Marsudi said that for the new president, Joe Biden, please to conduct peace in South Asia region. Pada pertemuan KTT ASEAN ke-37, Ibu Retno Marsudi mengatakan kepada Presiden Joe Biden untuk membantu menciptakan perdamaian di kawasan Asia Tenggara. Ladies and gentlemen, we can see this is the uh, short timeline uh, Indonesia Defense Diplomacy to US. Start from 2020. Our Minister of Defense, Mr. Prabowo Subianto, going went to U.S. and after that, respond from uh, U.S. with deliver Miss Mr. Mike Pompeo to Indonesia in to, on, in also in 2020. After that. At the at the end of 2020, Christopher Miller went to Indonesia. 
Next. Okay. Indonesia has a good relationship to US and China. As we know, we we have strategic global strategic partnership. This is Indonesia defense diplomacy to China. In 2019, Mr. Prabowo Subianto went to China. And after that, in 2020, Mr. Wei Feng He respond and replied Mr. Prabowo visiting to Mr. Wei Feng He visit to Indonesia. What is real what is the really defense diplomacy aim? First is to representation. Second is to different different effect. The third is transforming the way we work. Number four, negotiation and bargaining position. Number five, increasing credibility. Number six, decreasing opponent stack. Number seven, information gathering or intelligence. Number eight, to form public opinion. Number nine, to promote international law. Number 10, confidence building measure. Next, what is Indonesia's strategy? Indonesia, in my opinion, in my paper, play a hedging, hedging strategy. This is the middle strategy to avoid partiality to one party. Atau dalam bahasa Indonesia, -nya, strategi ini untuk menghindari kita berpihak, Indonesia berpihak ke dalam Se sebuah negara baik itu Amerika Serikat ataupun Cina. Lanjut. Oke. Okay. At the end in my conclusion said that Indonesia has a big impact in Southeast Asia. Indonesia memiliki dampak yang besar di Asia, kawasan Asia Tenggara. Indonesia play a role as a harness broker in the Southeast Asia. Pernyataan ini disampaikan pada pertemuan terakhir per, perwakilan uh, Amerika Serikat di Indonesia said that Indonesia is a harness broker in South Asia. And the last is Indonesia play a hedging to embrace US China. Indonesia memainkan peran hedging untuk merangkul Amerika Serikat dan China, especially in South China Sea territory. That's all my short presentation. If there is uh, there are a question Uh, please welcome the don't be hesitate to ask this presentation for me that's all thank you very much i send back to miss joyce hello gerald thank you for your presentation um uh, let us um so uh, there's a question here no? so um it says Uh, okay. Uh, during this pandemic, okay, during this pandemic, um, from your research results, do Chinese military still show their force in Laut China Selatan? Can Can you repeat, please? Okay, I said uh, that. Um, based uh, during this time of pandemic, huh? uh, do you do you see no? uh, do you still see um, Chinese military? No? Do they still show their force in Laut China Selatan? Okay, 
uh, thank you very much for the question. In my paper and in my observation, I see even though uh, nowadays in the in the world there there is a there is a pandemic pandemic situation. China still still show force their military their uh, their military action such as uh, plane or uh, fighting jet fighting uh, their uh, their potential military force okay so uh, yes. and also wait, wait a minute yeah. wait a minute uh, and also this uh, movement this china movement uh, respond by us okay. us also send their military to show force uh, their uh, what I can see, I can say their uh, uh, action. So these two country uh, still reply one each other. That's all, Miss. Okay. So thank you for your response. So it means that uh, the uh, presence of Chinese military is still. Uh, seen no? in, in the, the Laut China Salatan. Okay, you're talking about diplomacy, right? You're talking about diplomacy. And don't you think, don't you think the word against in your title is somewhat not appropriate? It is a comment from one of the uh, uh, participants because uh, the title of your paper is Indonesia defense diplomacy against the united states right china in the south china sea as an effort to create peace in the region so hello hello can you hear me yes yes we can hear you Terputus ya, Mbak? Mr. Gerald. Yes, so I think yeah. Dr. Joyce. Terputus dari sana dari Filipin kayaknya. Yes. So, uh, the question is here, Pak. Um, ya. Yeah. Regarding the word penempatan kata against. So, one of the the participants suggest that maybe you can uh rephrase, rephrase about the word against because it seems when you use the against it's like um indicating some of the some of the 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 battle or some of the fight so okay. jadi yeah so perhaps bisa dicari sinonim dari against kata against ini karena uh, yeah it should be like offensive offensive Betul. pak yeah, yeah seems like ah. offensive yeah thank you thank you for the kindly kindly uh, suggestion and yeah i will try to uh, rephrase, rephrase because uh, yeah. last week is not enough time for me to uh, make this uh, short presentation and uh, because yeah anything else anything uh, some something happens thank you for the kindly suggestion and i will try to uh, change the phrase or the word against thank you very much okay okay, okay. okay. you're back okay yeah i'm back maybe huh? this is uh this is the challenge when you have the, uh in technicalities thank you for your answer uh, Gerald. Okay. Thank you, so, Miss Joyce. Yeah. So, do you have any uh, more questions uh, 
uh, uh, participants, our, our researchers and presenters. Very interesting uh, topic indeed. Okay, so and it's good that uh, Indonesia no, um, uh, aims to be a uh, 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 to create peace, no, uh, to create peace in the region. Okay, so since we don't have any more questions, maybe we can go to the next um, presenter on social science. Okay, so uh, the topic is social media, climate change, and youth activism using social media in climate strike movement 2019. And the presenter is Arisi Jorgi Sutan. Thank you very much, Mr. Joyce. Uh, let me uh, present it with new uh, PowerPoint. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I was, uh, for the first time, I will say thank you to the Mr. Joyce and also the committee who gave me a chance to uh, present our research with the title of Social Media, Climate Change and Youth Activism Using Social Media in Climate Strike Movement that happened in 2019. And also, I, will, I would like to say thank you very much to the uh, attendants or the participants who can attend in this uh, conference. Okay. Uh, this project, uh, In this, part, this uh, in this presentation, there is uh, defined in six uh, part or six outline. This is the first one is about introduction. Second one is about uh, method and third is a uh, findings for its discussion, part in conclusion, and will be extended with key initiation. In 15 March 2009, there is a test uh, and movement to, uh, to raise awareness of uh, climate change problem, the call of uh, call of uh, climate strike movement. On the, other, on the other side, the climate strike movement was initiated by the Greta Thunberg. Uh, this uh, movement spread so fast using social media. Uh, there was protest made by the younger region, and there is a way make, uh, to, that's, uh, to make a better environment as to start using a new renewable energy and reduce the fossil energy like that. Uh, the young generation also, in this case of uh, climate strike movement, have uh, as participant and protest of climate change problem show that young generation is more aware about environmental health and express it using social media. By the data of uh, so, uh, statica.com 2021, uh, the, this is about the Twitter access, uh, user access in a uh, server country. Then the highest is of the from USA with more than 69 million, 0.3 million, and also the Japan, India, UK, uh, Brazil, Indonesia, Turkey. Saudi Arabia, Mexico, and France in top 10. It's provided that social media become large uh, or mass media and become becoming have uh, some large user also in this case of Twitter. Uh, social media can define a tool of public sphere and also the giving pressure like happened in Arab Spring social media uh, in Arab Spring. That social media used to tool and giving pressure to the authoritarian government. We said that social becoming public spirit like that happened in hashtag Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, on the several social movement nowadays, uh, the social media using to communicate. From the political aspect, we can see that green politics as part of environmental movement. Uh, Her Hardin wrote in the tragedy, the tragedy of common, in the individual or group tends to exploit until the ecological damage. Except all the preferences to talk about social media relation in environmental and climate movement. This research tries to know what kind of social media use in climate strike movement in 2009. Uh, and that's spreading using social media. In this research, uh, six to answer uh, three questions. The first one about what kind of social media content on climate strike movement. Secondly, about uh, what kind of social media relation in climate strike movement. And the last is about narrative that spread in social uh, media in case of climate strike movement. This research using a qualitative approach uh, using QDAS to analyze the data or qualitative data analysis of that, deliver data using still qualitative description way, and the software tool is and virtual plus. Uh, this research also using social media uh, data, and uh, in this case, uh, as, my, as main analysis using seven hashtags that uh, related with climate strike movement, like the climate hashtag climate action, hashtag climate change, hashtag climate crisis, Hashtag climate strike online, hashtag fits the climate emergency, hashtag Fridays for future, and hashtag school strike for climate. 
from the table two, we can see from the uh, climate strike uh, hashtag description, like we happen on the hashtag of climate action, that we can see as re refer to that climate change need and corrective action like that. And from the figure four, we can see that for uh, analysis step that happened in this research. From the first one is about the collecting the data. So the data from the Twitter, it's collecting uh, using and capture and later on to uh, coding the data, the coding the data using some terms and themes and uh, to defining the themes that popular or to defining the uh, narration and also the relation of hashtag. And, and, and later on about the analysis of the data, the analysis of the data means that in this research using three kind analysis. The first one is cross tabulary analysis in NP Potola Plus. Secondly, about uh, using uh, cluster analysis in uh, NP Potola Plus also. And the third uh, or the last is about the word cloud analysis to know the narrative spread in social media. On the finding, the first one about we want to know what can be uh, content about climate strike movement on social media. In this movement, um, the figure five, we can see the uh, graphical about the uh, result that is also the description in table three about the uh, percentage of the uh, climate, uh, climate change strike movement content. In this case, we can see that the theme or the content is defined in three themes or three form or three the first one about climate change and the secondly about the climate strike and strike with its profile that and it's supported that social media becoming uh, to spread the narrative and the, also the content that concentrate in three uh, those of uh, climate uh, theme, the climate change, climate strike and also strike with. And uh, secondly, we want to know what kind the uh, hashtag relation uh, in this research, uh, in this research using cluster analysis with uh, some criteria. Some criteria means uh, using lower limit and upper limit. In NV4 Plus, we need to set up the uh, cluster, anal cluster analysis with uh, lower limit in this research using 0 0.6 as uh, to know the, the relation have or the, the hashtag have the relation. And also the upper limit is one point. From the figure one, we can see the result in table four as a description. The highest relation is the hashtag of schools right for climate with the face the climate change and climate emergency it's more than 0 0.9 uh, point it's mean that uh, we can see that, that we can see the relation uh, positively with uh, value is positively and we can see the uh, relation uh, of the hashtag later on we want to know what can the narration on social media uh, in this case using uh, word code analysis and the word code analysis limit to 100 uh, narrative or the word uh, popular that and social media. Uh, in this case, using uh, word uh, 100 uh, word that's famous, uh, famous, famous appear on the figure seven. In table five, we also to know, we want to know what can the table uh, top ten, but what can the word that become a top ten on the uh, 100 word uh, popular. There are from seven for uh, six from the uh, ten word popular uh, in top ten. There is using a hashtag, and also uh, using hashtag like the climate change, fight for future, climate crisis, hashtag uh, climate strike online, hashtag climate action, hashtag face the climate emergency, and also hashtag the call strike for climate. Also including in as a popular word and also not a popular narration in uh, social media. Uh, in this case, we can see also uh, account also like the happen in uh, figure seven. There is also account with the Greta Thunberg that's become that's become a narrative that spread also in social media, and also not just that uh, social media using a word universal word, but it's a refer to the uh, climate strike uh, team. Uh, in this case, it's weak climate and also strike that happen in social media. In this case, we can see that social media used to spread the narration, spread the content of the uh, climate change movement, like they happened before on the uh, hashtag Black Lives Matter, and also uh, like they happened in uh, Arab Spring movement. We said that social media related to uh, tend so strong because they have uh, some goals, same goal, and also to spread awareness and narration of climate change movement. Social media so that. Uh, it can be interact with another hashtag, not just same, with the same hashtag, but it's also 
uh, refer, reference to same goals or principle. And the social media narration in this case using a universal word, uh, using some criteria like the single word, using hashtag and account as famous narration to represent the social movement and uh, climate strike. The famous social media word using account represent, represent, represented of the activism like the Greta Thunberg account is also appear in uh, this narration. So what's kind of conclusion? There is the conclusion. The first one about social media used to spread the narration interaction of not activists and also attracting the netizen to join the movement. Besides then social media also have a strong relationship uh, to the hashtag, uh, to the another hashtag using a lower sex and the highest relation in 0.9 point. And the relation of social media hashtag in this case tend, tends to strong because they have a same goal, just spreading awareness and narration. In this case, climate strike movement, social media using as universal word also to share the content, not just that. Social media also using a hashtag and account in their narration. With this research expected or implicated can deliver to the reader that social media use in this climate change movement have a vital function in the climate strike movement that happened in 2090. Uh, I think thank you very much for the attention, the uh, participant or also to the uh, committee. Uh, thank you very much for, uh, I will say, lovely uh, looking forward about the feedback and also the question. Thank you very much. Thank you, Phyllis Joyce. Okay, thank you, thank you, Arisi. No, did I pronounce your name correctly, Arisi? Thank you for that. All right, we have a few questions. Uh, we have a few questions and comments here. Okay, so first question is, uh, based on digital civility index no, on Microsoft, we know that Indonesian netizen was classified as barbar. -bar. I really don't know what barbar -bar is. Auntie, <laughs> okay, what's barbar? Okay. Bar -bar? Okay. Okay. Yes. So okay. According okay, to okay, their okay, commentary, I, I <laughs> yeah, according to mm. their commentary on social media, uh, is in uh, is climate uh, movement. Uh, ano, is this area no uh, does this also happen okay okay, uh, so, okay. Yes. Uh, the digital civility index about microsoft that so yes. indonesian netizen is barbaric uh is barbar means the barbaric and also uh, we can see that uh, social media uh in this case uh i can i can say that oh there is clear about the barbaric from the comment of indonesia it's possibility to know that but uh, from the thousand, uh, from the one hundred uh, nation that spread, it's reference to uh, show that this movement needs an action like that, and also using social media to promote it, the movement like that and becoming uh, more, more, more bigger and more bigger. Uh, recently, after from the COVID nineteen pandemic in this uh, town, in this country, and also the continent, uh, it's also maybe it can impact to the movement with more to digitally like that. Uh, I think that I can ensure that uh, Indonesia will be uh, the, 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 the climate movement, climate strike movement will be clear from the uh, barbaric comment like that. But it's a reference us to that uh, social media uh, using, using uh, I'm sorry, I will reset. It's mean that uh, uh, social media provide the activism of uh, climate strike movement with uh, the, the, that happened in 2019 like that. I think okay. thank you that I can yeah. say, Mr. Joyce. Okay, okay. Um, uh, there is also a comment here, no? Um, uh, I receive, no? So the your overall presentation is good. Okay. Hello, Mr. Joyce. Okay. So I think because Dr. Joyce have a raining in Philippines, <laughs> she just texted me. So I will uh, back up on her while waiting for uh, her to join again. So actually, Arisi, your, your research is interesting and have a good standing point of view. And regarding the initial uh, movement on the climate in the, and the climate change, uh, particularly for the Greta Thunberg yeah, as the youth uh, inspirations, like that, uh, but I wonder, and this is my question actually, because in the conclusion you state about uh, the vital no. function, yes, uh, okay. the vital function. So, what do you mean by that? Because, uh, mm. yeah, 
Yeah. Maybe you can share also the conclusion slide. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. I will say the slide. Yeah. Okay. It's we can see that. Okay, yes, in this in this conclusion, yes. you can see that that social media use or uh, in this climate change have a vital function. It's mean that uh, social media use in this case needs uh, as as pro, uh, as part of protest or, or becoming to a tool and also as to as public to discuss in this uh, uh, climate strike movement. It means that social media using to spreading their narration like that uh, and have a relation with another hashtag. It's shown that uh, social media user or the netizen also have the big mass about and concentrate about the uh, climate change movement in this uh, 2019 uh, pandemic, uh, 2019 uh, phenomenon. And because we can see uh, in 2019, there is of two to become, become our, uh, uh, about Karhutla and also uh, in Australia in 2020 is also uh, about the forest uh, fire forest fire forest in Australia also I think that's uh, that's social media in this using user need uh, using social media to share the narrative like that yeah so yes um, that's that's clear but maybe for your improvements, it will be better. It will be better if you can like uh, classify what kind of vital function that the the readers because we will we should assume that our research or our paper will be read by others. So make sure that we deliver the wait a minute let me again. So make sure that our research can uh, can bring a new insight or a new uh, perspective so the readers can learn from our research actually. Okay. So maybe for the functions you can make like um, classification for example a okay, vital okay. function in terms of educate educate the like that, uh, okay. the what we call it the youth about the yeah. about the climate change or maybe I don't know based on your research finding yeah of course yeah based on yeah. your research finding okay. and also data or maybe instead of education maybe there are another function that you that you can uh, get during uh, collecting the data because you grab the data from the social media right yes by yes, using the hashtag and etc maybe you can okay. find something uh, something uh, unique or something indigenous. Uh, maybe, I don't know, it really depends on your data. So maybe you can classify that. So the vital function is become a clear or uh, yeah, become a clear definitions yes, because yes, it uh, will be like, yeah, it's uh, very. It is, in, uh, yeah, yes, yes. A vital function in this uh, climate strike movement, it's more than to uh, spreading and also to attract the uh, another activists, but it also. Uh, make the northern citizen or uh, citizen and also the netizen more aware to the uh, climate uh, climate change crisis. It means that social function in this in this uh, in this uh, research I mean that social function becoming social media become a platform to grabbing all the uh, netizen to learn to spreading the narration to interact with other activists and like that and also to join yes. the movement of uh, climate change. I think that's, yes. that's big yeah. function. It should be written in your full paper later yes. on, yeah? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. 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 good luck on your study, Arisi. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Do okay, Dr. Joyce, are you here? Okay, let me check with her. Uh, Dr. Joyce? Can you hear my voice? Hi. Sorry for that. <laughs> I need to make some... Uh, uh, Okay, anyway, um, thank okay. you for your presentation, Arisi. I just have one more, um, one more comment because she, uh, it, it is mentioned that social media, climate change, and youth activism. Uh, you did not make mention about youth activism in your presentation. So how is it related to, to the paper? Because uh, I did not see or I did not... Uh, uh, see the word uh, i mean is there a relationship with uh, okay uh, yeah uh, from the relationship of the climate change and youth activism yes, like that yeah yes, yes. Uh, in this research we can see that profit of uh, most of the uh, participant on the protest is from the uh, youth active youth, youth okay. activism like the happen like the was initiated is greater than that's of 
in that year in 2019 is All right. uh, 15 years old that as, as part of the uh, s uh, climate change uh, activism as we can see that uh, social media becoming uh, to to grow out of the youth activism also in this case of Greta Thunberg I can explain that okay. I just can explain the, the uh, uh, explain of the Greta Thunberg okay okay thank you thank you very much thank you Mr. Joyce Okay, so uh, next for our uh, next presenter, thank you for RIT. So our next presenter is also on social science. No? So the topic is, uh, the paper title is called How Indonesian Government Responds New Normal Tourism, uh, Promoting Virtual Tourism During the COVID-19 Pandemic. Let me call on Danang Eko Prastya. Danang, are you there? Hello? Yes. Hello. Hello, mister. Hello, miss. Hello. Yes. Can you can you start your presentation now. Yes. Uh, thank you, moderator, for giving me a chance to present today. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I will uh, share screen my PowerPoint. Okay. My research, uh, I'm sorry, uh, thank you very much for opportunity to give me today. Uh, my name is Danang Eko Prastyo. I'm from Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. And uh, my team with uh, Mr. Eko Priya Purnomo, Ms. Lupna Sotsabila, and Akil Teguh Fatoni. Today, I will present my current research on pandemic COVID within by me and my research group. Uh, here, I will present my research with the title How to Indonesia Government Respond New Normal Tourism uh, Promoting Virtual Tourism During the COVID Pandemic 19. This presentation will be divided into four sections, uh, starting from uh, introduction. Uh, second, the method, and the third, uh, result and discussion, and the fourth, conclusion. Introduction. Uh, we know that uh, COVID had impact with uh, tourism sector. Uh, from a uh, figure one, we know the number of foreign visitors to Indonesia decreased dramatically in 2020. Uh, before the pandemic emerges, the number of Indonesian visitors uh, increased significantly in five years. The number of Indonesian foreign visitors has highest number in 2019 with uh, 16.11 million foreign tourist people. Uh, before pandemic, the number of Indonesian visitors has highest in 2019 with uh, 1611. Will Indonesia foreign tourists in 2020 only reach uh, 4.2 million people? The number is decreasing reach 75.3% uh, compared to 2019 which amount to uh, 16.11 million as seen in figure one. It caused a big a problem to Indonesia economy sector because tourism sector become the high contributor to foreign exchange. Even uh, tourism sector has significant growth for three years ago. The pressure of COVID-19 to tourism sector has an impact for economic sector. It is uh, because the tourism sector has played
I'm so I'm sorry. Uh, I I have a double account uh, with uh, portable smartphone and laptop, and you can see my face with uh, smartphone. I will uh, continue my presentation. I'm sorry. And the pressure of COVID-19 to tourism sector has an impact for the economic sector. It is because tourism sector has played a significant role in Indonesia economy. The contribution of tourism to gross domestic product in 2019 went 4.7% or increase of 0.959% uh, from 2017 of 4.11. Uh, Danang, may I butt in? Maybe you can mute your other cell phone so we can uh, hear you well. Uh, you can mute your other cell phone. Okay. Yes, yes, sir. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, however, uh, amid pandemic condition and the existence of large-scale social distancing policy or PSPB and social distancing as well as the course of recreational area aimed to suppressing the spread of COVID-19, it can cause people mobility to decline. This certainly has an impact on Indonesia tourism. Although uh, it didn't last long uh, with the new normal and health protocol for tourism. People start planning another vacation with a man of whom. However, they also uh, worry about their health during their visit, especially when tourists think about a time set uh, with whether it is safe or not to travel in the new, no new normal era. Therefore, uh, Responsive and adaptive effort from the government are needed to increase tourism in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. And then method. Uh, the research method is using social content and computer-assisted quality, qualitative data analysis method to explain our policy innovation and the Indonesia government to maintain tourism sector during pandemic COVID-19. The NP4 12 plus used to explain the role of the government to sustain tourism sector during COVID-19. The data collect the news online that relate with the government policy on tourism sector in COVID-19. The data collect from uh, 3 March 2020 to March 2000. Uh, 21 and capture uh, from NP4 used uh, by research to collect the Twitter and news online data. Uh, the NP4 12 plus used to explain the role of the government to sustain tourism sector during COVID 19. The NP4 used plus choose by research because uh, NP4 12 plus can provide social content analysis and scheme code analysis. And then result and discussion. To support tourist attraction still open, the government decided to create a strategy through Indonesia Virtual Tour. Indonesia Virtual Tour is a digital media website and application that display uh, 360 degrees photo in the form of a 360 virtual tour content, which is managed directly by it is that a children visual foundation and state children visual foundation in additional con continuously producing uh, 360 virtual tour content so it can be used uh, as mean a promotion that informative as well as a content educational and entertainment value uh, virtual tourism can be alternative step that can be taken by government for tourists who want to travel in the midst of a pandemic with a sense of security and comfort. The government and tourism actor can collaborate in organizing virtual tourism in Indonesia. There are several activities have been held by 
the government in effort to encourage virtual tourism. Our participant, uh, you can see the table one and the event of virtual tourism. One of, one of the example of implementation Indonesian virtual tour is ecotourism online festival. It activity to promote tourism and UMKM from West Nusa Tenggara through collaboration with Traveloka launch a virtual tour innovation from an online experience as a solution to getting exciting, interactive, and inspiring experiment, experience in various tourist destinations in the country without leaving home. One collaboration with Traveloka launched a virtual tour innovation from online uh, inspiration in various tourist destinations in the country without leaving home. Virtual tour, the title Ngabuburit Coffee Tour held a minister, uh, Ministry Tourism of Indonesia with the Jakarta Good Guide or GGG community. And then uh, also a uh, social media is also involved, involved on strategy to promote tourism attraction during pandemic uh, based on a figure two. And the role social media become seen clearly for the promotion platform to promote the tourism attraction. The mention of wonderful Indonesia become the highest hashtag on the official social media of uh, Ministry of Tourism of Indonesia. The hashtag of uh, Wonderful Indonesia reached uh, 18% compared to other mentions. Uh, the mention indicate the government decided to introduce uh, many destination tourist attraction in Indonesia. And then the second hashtag is Sobat uh, Kamen Prav. The hashtag uh, Sobat Kamen Prav reached 16.95%. Uh, this hashtag indicate the Ministry of Tourism has a strategy through a citizen relation on social media to share information about the tourist attraction. Uh, besides uh, promoting tourism attraction uh, during uh, pandemic COVID-19, uh, social media also become the platform of the government to connect with each other to make a big, big, big movement about tourism attraction. Based on figure three, the official social media of Ministry Tourism and Creativity Economy Indonesia has a correlation also uh, with uh, official social media of media mainstream, such as uh, NetTV and MNC Newsroom. The main goal of the, this correlation is to create a big promotion about the tourist attraction. Thus, the society will be knowing that the tourist attraction has been opened and implement health standard protocol to accommodate the visitor. In this era, the social media becomes a new platform of the new government to interact with its other own goal. The ring of social media is more helping the government to reach the society effectively to promote tourism attraction. Uh, during the COVID-19, the role of government play a vital role to sustain all the sector. The government is required as to make a new strategy to sustain the economic sector as well as maintain the number of COVID-19 cases is not increasing. This uh, innovation capability of the government is very deep. This emphasis on pandemic situation. And then the last slide, last slide as conclusion, uh, virtual tourism is an alternative government policy to maintain community tourism interest in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, people feel safe and comfortable in using virtual tourism because they, they do not need to visit tourist attraction directly. Virtual tourism development can be done with the collaboration and active participant of tourism sector. 
They said uh, social media had also become the new platform to help the government to promote a new destination to the visitor. The government also collaborated with the official media mainstream to create a big movement and a social media that uh, promote a new destination tourist attraction in Indonesia. Uh, I think enough uh, presentation uh, from me and my team. I hope uh, to all participants and presenters can give me feedback and suggestion to better, better uh, presentation. Thanks, moderator. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Danang, for your presentation. Okay, so we have uh, a few questions here. Um, the fir first question is about uh, true to this situation. So when the tourists started canceling their uh, when the tourists canceling their offline tour, uh, were there is there no an increase on the online visitor of YouTube review about the tour about the tours? Uh, when they started canceling the uh, tours, uh, was there an increase on online visitor no of the YouTube review about the tours? I think uh, is Akil uh, your core researcher? Oh yeah, Akil, go ahead. You can uh, you can uh, answer the question. Yes, Doctor Joyce. Hello. Yes. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hear me. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm the one of the co-author of this yes. article. Mm -hmm. I am with my team. The one talking about the government policy or forest fire. The one talking about the Twitter. <laughs> And now our <clears throat> our article talking about the tourism, virtual tourism. Okay. Yes. The first question from the Mr. Taki Yudin. Yeah. The during the pandemic, the online visitor, especially in tourism, uh, it is increasing the uh, hike. I mean, uh, then I'll please share your search screen, please. Yes. Yes. In the online tourism, I mean, the, 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 in the new normal era, the, the highest uh, visit tourists in, in uh, online. But, uh, and then the second one, the, the, the government, the virtual tourism is the, 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 the strategy or the, the new policy for the make uh, tourism, uh, I mean, it's uh it's not grow up but it still can defense during the pandemic so the, the policy on all in tourists is the, the the one way for the strategies but in the other hand in in the uh, other hand uh there is the any uh there is ha have a negative impact for the, uh i mean the for destination who doesn't have the the virtual destination. I mean, if uh, we have the village destination and also uh, the, 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 the destination who not support with the internet connection. Mm -hmm, true. But yeah, uh, yeah you know, the, the, the local economy or the, we, in Indonesia, we call it uh, UMKM. There is not give a support economy during the uh, pandemic, especially in online virtual tourism. Okay, so uh, there is also one comment here, no? Can you go back to your title? So can you go back to your title? Um, there is a comment. Okay. How do Indonesia government respond? Yes. <laughs> about your title because uh, um, I think it's not the met response to a new normal. No? So um, I think and uh, uh, there's a comment here that uh, it has to be during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, Hello. Uh, number there. Please repeat again, please, uh, Dr. Joyce. Uh, we have to... Yeah, 
uh, it says that um, uh, basically it's promoting virtual tourism during the COVID-19 pandemic instead of COVID pandemic 19. Excuse me, Dr. Joyce, I can hear your question clearly. Actually, your, your connection is uh, unstable, so that's why uh, we cannot uh, clearly hear your voice, Dr. Joyce. Do you mean like the, the title of the research needs to be uh, re revised, right? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, may, so based on Dr. Joy's suggestions, uh, maybe later on Dr. Joyce can uh, type also in the chat, maybe because <laughs> on and off your your voice, we cannot uh, clearly hear your voice. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think like that. Yeah. I, I, and I'm then. Sorry, I'm really very sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Yes, okay yeah, it's okay. Nice. Our, yeah. Our title. yeah. Thank you for your suggestion. Mr. Akil, I have a question yeah. also. I don't need to hear about yeah, I have a question actually. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, um, this research is interesting also because it's really related with current situations, particularly for our country. And actually, I want to know uh does in your full in your full paper or in your article have you already mentioned about the current policy the current policy from the government regarding this virtual tourism yeah okay in our full paper uh, maybe uh, after the first screening i think i think for the first screening for the full paper uh, but in uh, in in the, our full paper now we have to input our input the news policy during the pandemic i mean in the since the march of 2020 and uh, and until the new policy about the virtual tourism but if you ha have any suggestion maybe we can revise it and we, we will input the new policy about the virtual tourism yeah so i have a suggestion for you yeah. so at least you have to include if you already include then it's good but if you not yet include so better for uh, you to include the updated policy the updated policy from the government regarding the virtual tourism because as we know we already facing this uh, pandemic uh, i think almost 2 years yeah Al almost 2 years so i think the government already react uh, I think already make some uh, some new policy regarding this, but I don't know whether it is related with the virtual tourism or not. And if it is not related, then your research will be contribute in terms of the practical implication, and which is very good actually. And then later on, uh, make sure that in after of course seeing your. Uh, your, your data and also your finding based on the uh, analysis, maybe uh, later on in the conclusion part, you can, uh, or in the, in the conclusion or in the dis discussion, yeah, maybe you can add more points regarding the recommendations because you already uh, gathering the data, right, from the social media and also, et cetera, you have some new insight that perhaps it will be useful for the government or maybe for the readers, I mean, like to learn from your research. So I think it will be better also to put some recommendation that you can extract from your uh, data. You can put it in the discussions or maybe in the conclusions. So it will also highlight it, your contribution of the research. Okay, like thank that. you very much, Mr. Sandy. Okay. We will input the, the suggestion. Okay, good luck. Okay, yeah. Dr. Joyce. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Am I okay now? Can you? Yes. Hear me? Now you are okay. Yeah. Uh, this uh, technical uh, difficulties. We should make a paper about this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. Now we go to the uh, next, the fourth track, fourth, uh, which is about Islamic studies. Okay, so it's about it's a very interesting topic on the study on early Islamic engineering no? by Muhammad Takiuddin. Muhammad? 
Yes, I'm here. Can everyone uh, hear you? Yes, good. Hello. Thanks. Yes, hello. Okay. Okay. Okay, my turn. Thanks for moderator for uh, other participant and my new friend in this agenda. Here, I want to like some uh, about uh, Islamic engineering. What must we uh, understand about this uh, topic? Next slide. Uh, the first. So the question, the first question is, what is the purpose of civil engineering in Islam? Uh, here we focus on uh, Islamic engineering in historical context. The first is human needs in Islam. Uh, they are uh, ibadah or worship, maybe. Uh, next, this is the first. So next, there's a second, uh, yeah, second needs in Islam, the Makasid Sharia. With this, the Makosite Sharia is prevention of the fight, the prevention of the intellect and the life and the worlds and the others. Based on two uh, points, the engineering is developed. Next slide. Okay, next. Thank you. The first, uh, human welfare. Uh, Human welfare, uh, as we understand here, is doing the job easily. So if we see the manuscript of Al Jazari, we focus on or for uh, we focus on three figures: the first Al Jazari, so Banu Musa, and the Khalif Al Muradi. This three person is the early engineering in Islam, uh, early scientists in engineering in Islam. So I read and I like this uh, manuscript which is found in online. Uh, because this during COVID, the most of library in uh, international library, I, I find their manuscript was preserved online. So we see here uh, animal power for water rising yeah, is one of the engineering Islam. So next, we see also this is the primary, and so next the tertiary uh, human trends. When we see. Uh, human trends here. Uh, the Al Jazeera make an uh, a good uh, a good uh, I see the good creativity here. Uh, elephant clock. When we see this elephant clock, every of this figure in elephant clock was represent of uh, very uh, much of civilization which joined with uh, the Islamic civilization and that at that day. The we see here. Uh, Phoenix on the top of the clock. This represents an anti civilization. So we also see the dragon, they represent of China civilization. And also we see the eleven. We see the, the eleven is representing the civilization. So in Islamic engineering, they uh, also the rich all and, and, and reach the uh, creation with uh, integration of civilization. Next. Here I make a look the list of manuscript and early generation in Muslim scientists. We see here uh, Banu Musa at 7 and 8th century of Masehi. Uh, his manuscript is Kitab Al-Hiyal Al-Handasiya. This is written in Arabic. So Al Jazari, Kitab Fima Arif Al Hiyalah Dasiyah, the Book of Knowledge and Indigenous, which is uh, Last of Death, uh, Ibn Khalaf Al Muradi. This three figure was the primary figure on understanding Islamic engineering. Who is Banu Musa? We see Banu Musa is not a one person, but he is a three brother. Three famous brothers in the Basit area and Abbasid era, Abbasia. So it is uh, Musa bin Sakir, Ahmad bin Musa, and so on. At next, we see the Banu Musa works. Next slide. Uh, the Banu Musa works, the important is the automatization. Automatization of here is the oil and lime, uh, the automatic lime. Which not not uh, not need to we pour it on the 
oil, but it's automatically uh, fire take the uh, hole, the hole from uh, the oil from the hole to establish the fire. So the person in that time see that that swap not uh, not need the not need uh, the, the the fire is not need the oil, but really it is oil need, need for the oil of course. Next. Yes. Uh, there's also Al Jazari. His full name is Al Jazari, but Yusaman Abdul Aziz Ismail Al Jazari. He read uh, the book Kitab Al Hiyal Al Handasiyah. This means in English, uh, indigenous scientist. Buku-buku uh, unik atau teknik tentang uh, apa namanya engineering. That's in Indonesia we say. Next, we will uh, we will see his work. What is uh, the primary of his work? We can find that the main illustration, uh, the water, the water pump, the early water pump, which uh, of course with cylinder and double action here, as what is we find in modern era of water pump here. So. Also, the last figure we see, Ibn Khalaf al Moradi, he is a Spanish because he lived in Cordoba in Umayyad dynasty. His work was uh, just now discovered in 1917 in entitled in, in Kitab al Asrar. Yeah, Kitab al Asrar, Pinata, it's al Afkar. This is was uh, transcript and translate to English uh, to the word title the book of sacred next next slide we see the fragment of manuscript by al muradi kitab al asrar finata it's al afkar this is uh, English translation which uh, the project is founded by Qatar Library and Qatar Foundation to uh, what is to reconstruct the Al Jazari's, uh, the Al Muradi uh, engineering and their contribution? Uh, maybe this only this uh, only I can be speak here to be a presentation. Thanks a lot. Uh, may this agenda be success. Uh, love no best. Thanks for the moderator and the other participants. Hey, thank you, Muhammad, for your uh, presentation. No? Uh, study on early Islamic engineering. So you use um, qualitative um, uh, descriptive method uh, uh, yes. on exploring your primary sources. Okay, so um, uh, what do you think uh, is the value of your paper, of your um, study? What value that it, does it give to uh, to Islamic engineering? Yes, I here to insist uh, to focus how we must uh, know day to resurrect uh, to reconstruct the early manuscript of uh, science. When we see uh, this nowadays science, we can trace. We must to trace back these roots in what uh, what era the science. Uh, it's firstly developed. If I here to, uh, to notice here, the early Islamic engineering was not only not developed in a zero condition, they also adopt and they integrate from the early civilization such as Persia, as uh, India, also in Greek, the ancient Greek, which they, uh, that early uh, civilization, they use almost of them, almost of their technology, use uh, water for the uh, the what is it for the energy, the water energy. So we can conclude here the early civilization before us, they uh, understand that the sustainable development basic uh, for their engineering. I hear I notice here. So do you mean that even before, no, even before uh, and our our ancestors no have been already yes. uh, doing something to uh, about sustainability, right? Yes. 
yes, this value of can we trace back and can we understand. So now, can we uh, need a collaboration between Muslim and non-Muslim and other work to develop any, I see the sustainable development based of engineering. I see this agenda is was uh, we see in this world now. Yes, yes. Now we have the uh, UNSDG agenda, right? And sustainability is a must. Okay. So uh, do you still have any more questions about uh, uh, the presentation of uh, Muhammad? Uh, okay. Why did you choose this particular figures in your study? Because you made mention of three figures, right? In your study. Why yes. did you choose these three figures? Uh, thank you for the question from uh, Mrs. Santi, Ra Santi Rahmawati. Yes. Uh, here I choose a three figure here because based on their manuscript, which can be saved in uh, word, because the other manuscript, the another manuscript was can be traced back. Yeah, of course in in our in Indonesia, there's no 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 access to the manuscript, the early manuscript of scientific manuscript in uh, luxury database in international. But I can only uh, trace three figures about three manuscript. But in Khalif Al Muradi, the third figure, the manuscript was very uh, very rarely. Only one translation in English, but uh, I can I can um, access to, but only can access some figure of that manuscript. So this study is need to be uh, deeply concerned. Thanks. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, so the uh, uh, as I was reading your abstract, no, um, it's really uh, you are really want to know about Islamic engineering. Are you an engineer, uh, Muhammad? Uh, no, not. <laughs> not in not in action, but we have the engineering. It's uh, in language because okay, I okay. Uh, yes, deep in Arabic and you're an engineer manuscript. language, right? Yes, historical <laughs> context. Historical <laughs> context. Okay, so um, if we don't have any more questions, you can go to our last presenter for this morning for this conference, of course. Um, it's the last but not the least, no? So this is about, you're talking about sustainability, uh, Muhammad. And the next, uh, the last no, presenter is about sustainable development. No? So the topic is analysis of mode transportation for tourism development. A case study in the Magellan, Magellan Regency Central Java. So the presenter is Inamul Mustafa. Okay, you can start now in a move. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you, uh, moderator. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can my voice be here? Hello? Yes, loud and clear. We can hear your voice loud and clear. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, we would like to say thank you for joining my presentation. It's great to see you all. Let me introduce our slide. We are in Amul Mustafa, Eko Kriya Purnomo, Lubna Salsabila, Akhil Teguh Fatani, and Muhammad Iqbal Fadlu Rahman. We are from Department Government of Fire Administration and Yusuf Kala School Government, Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta, Indonesia. This presentation is to reveal the research result that and my team conducted before under the title Analysis of Mode Transportation for Tourism Development, a case study 
in the Magelang Regency Central Java, Indonesia. First of all, I will explain to you about the focus study in the reset is to analyze the mode of transportation as a supporting power in development tourist area in Magelang Regency, Central Java. Why? Because it's every trip or tourism destination, the mode of transportation will influence or become a consideration in determining in the location of tourism and the development tourist area. Additionally, the distance to tourist attraction, travel time and lodging are also consideration for this. Furthermore, industry is very significant. In several countries, the use of the tourism industry has become a source of state revenue as well as absorption of employment. Traveling using transportation has a key. A role is how a person gets from one place to another. That we know there are many incarnations of life or as today travel and tourism related industry are heavily supported by the use of food transportation. So, ideally, a tourism destination has a transportation mode that support local tourism and interborder transportation and rural transportation. Yeah. Uh, Let's look at the figure one and table one. The figure one, number of foreign and domestic uh, tourist monthly in 2020 in Magellan Regency fluctuated from June to December. And the table one, I can see available transportation mode in Magellan Regency 2020 Water Park Kalibening and Ketepas. As for the number of rural transportation, there are 20. Well, border transportation is 90. Then slide four. I will tell you about a literature review. I can see the figure two, it is theoretical framework. One tourist destination can be rich, which is actually the most basic recent tourist because there is a mean of transportation to a tourist support of the time choice with was made. In theory, if the choice has been made, the next consideration for tourists is the distance travel, duration of trip, accommodation, and the type of transportation used. Fabian Toro, Wibowo, and Jamjam also argue the regional crew can be influenced by how the tourism potential of the area is managed and developed. The government and society directly or indirectly need synergy so that they are benefit for both parties. Moreover, tourists who attend have a lot of motivation about enjoying the beauty of nature, culture, often also does research or study local condition. Okay, then methodology. I will tell you about uh, the method of this reset. This reset carried of using qualitative method, describing the situation by providing interpretation because the nature of qualitative research allow for exploration, 
Thus, it will be easier to obtain and find new meaning of the research activities carried out. Furthermore, this research will be produce more profound knowledge about social phenomena either from direct experience or information obtained. Some of the data is obtained directly from related agencies such as the Magelang Regency Transportation, Tourism Office, the Magelang Regency website, and simple interviews with the relevant staff office. Okay, the result of this study are first in Water Park Kalibene. As a fertile area, Kali Bening is place rich in water source with dominant agricultural area. Then water park Kali Bening become a place to visit and also place for some recreation, just like Kiai Langgang Park in Magelang, which has been tidy up first of tourist park. In the local transportation motor sector, the Kali Bening water park does not yet provide. And two, so the mode transportation between adjacent destination requires more specific mode transportation with road traverse by public transportation model. The new road innovation between tourism destination, a uh, researcher observation need the mood with unique route and special tourism model of transportation. We can see the location of uh, Katapas destination in figure four. Figure four is uh, Katapas. Katapas. Next. Tourism in Magelang Regency is managed by tourism office and official organization assign and authorize to manage and develop tourist asset. Magelang Regency and Central Java priority in tourism development, potential tourism with various types such as natural tourism, artificial tourism, cultural tourism, handicraft tourism, culinary tourism, special interest tourism, religious tourism, and village tourism are challenges and opportunity for Magelang Regency compiling its program and perform. And table two, and table two, I can see that the number of domestic visitor at Ketepas is 100,150,955. Kali Bening domestic visitor, 1,922. Okay, finally, the summary of this presentation, I will tell you about the conclusion. First, a high-clay tourism destination in Magelang Regency, water park Kali Bening and Ketepas must immediately improve the tourist attraction and the local transportation modes. And second, if rural transportation and border transportation are sufficiently considered 
the transportation sector priority is to provide local transportation facilities. Tourists must be addressed to continue to be pampered to explore the beauty of these two destinations. Ultimately, the recommendation that the researchers suggest the strengthen the model of transportation is the Calibening Water Park a uh, support bike, while for destination with the nearest objects such as water bath, grabak and sekar langit water, use a motorbike taxi. Okay, thank you uh, for your participation. Uh, I, if you have something to ask, uh, wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, thank you so far for your presentation. We have a few questions here. Um, this one is a uh, kid from Dr. Yani, and uh, he says that she actually come from uh, Magellan, no? And her question is, why did you choose Ketep and Kalibening as your focus? Why not Borobudur? Okay, so that's the first first question. How? Uh, why did you choose no, this particular uh, locality? Uh, Ketep and Kalibening. Uh, why? Why not Borobudur? Okay. Uh, because a destination Borobudur in National Building in Indonesia. Yes. Menjadi tanggung jawab dari uh, perusahaan uh, BUMN. Jadi not uh, Magelang Regency. Borobudur Destination itu menjadi wewenang Departemen Pariwisata, bukan Dinas Pariwisata di Kabupaten Magelang. Oke. Okay. Ah, uh, uh, Eko Priyo, we have uh, an, uh, a follow-up answer to what in Inamul Mustafa presented or yes. answers? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, I will have. Uh, first of all, thank you very much indeed to the steering committee and also to Joyce. It's my pleasure. I can join to this conference. Actually, I will encourage all my students here okay. to participate and join actively in this conference. This is the first yeah. one that I would like to say. Secondly, I really happy to have all the comments for on the participant as well. So in terms of the last comment about why we not look at Borobudur, the yeah. reason why, because Borobudur, Prambanan Temple, is even though it's located in Magelang, and Prambanan is located in Jogja, but those tourist destination are not controlled by local re or uh, regency. Okay. They managed by central government. So if we want to look at this issue, and then we want to know about how policy, something like that in local government and in the regency, it's really hard because okay. those major destination is controlled by central government. Thank you. Oh, and a follow-up question to that. Since uh, the research was conducted in 2020, how about the pandemic situation over there? Uh, are there foreign tourists coming to Magalang? Yeah, when we look at about the in the current situation, I think only a few people before lockdowns because Indonesia already established a lockdown. Uh, we already started last two days. Will be start from 3rd of July until 20th of July. So only a few people can come in and also mobile mobilize and come uh, travel in Java and Bali. But before the lockdown, actually there are a few people uh, are coming and also visit uh, the tourist destination. Some people, especially for domestic tourism, we we still can visit Borobudur, Prambanan, or something like that. 
Okay. So, uh, but uh, for foreign tourists, no, right? You, you, you were not able to cover that for this. Oh, race. there are a few. There are still uh, foreigner coming here. Okay. But because in Indonesia we still have open policy, so, so for those people already got a uh, vaccine and for those people already got uh, self quarantine right. at least uh, 10 days they can come and visit indonesia okay okay and then there's a follow there's another question here that talks about um it seems that um tourism um in uh with regards to gunugidul's regency you know, especially goa pindul they also have a problem on tourism. So the villagers offer an object uh, to covering the transportation to that place. So mm -hmm. uh, does this uh, case, uh, is it the same no? as, uh, uh, is it the, the same phenomena? Yeah, in some area, I think if we look at about the local tourism, I think we have to support the local community in regards to support their economic as well. Yes, I think in some area, the local people, they provide the transportation and as also they provide the food as well for the tourists. Okay, so when you talk about rural, what do you mean by rural transportation? Uh, I mean, uh, local transportation, I mean, sorry. Oh, okay, so lo uh, local, no? Uh, uh, rural transportation means local transportation, yeah. right? Okay, so... um. So, um, and uh, this particular study was done in 2020, even though that there is pandemic no? um, in Indonesia, still there were tourists who visited the uh, Ketep and Kalibening. Is that right? Am yeah. I right in saying that? Yeah. Okay, okay. So, um, uh, do we still have any more questions uh, for, the, uh, for Inmul Mustafa and for Eko Priyu? Okay, so um, it seems that uh, we don't have any more questions. So I'd like to uh, thank everyone no, for, ah, by the way, I have uh, a comment in your title, okay? So maybe you can uh, edit it a little bit because, yes. uh, okay, analysis of mode of transportation for tourism development. Uh, maybe we forgot the off there, no? So, uh, to, to make it yes. more um, okay so sure. okay. yeah okay so um yeah. thank point, you for your suggestion we will have revised in terms of the grammar checking and of grammar <laughs> error as well thank you okay so uh so at this point okay at this point um uh i'd like to uh, acknowledge everyone no, who uh, uh did their presentation um six of you no maybe we can give a, a virtual appreciation to everyone uh let's uh give our clap our hearts no and uh so uh to uh, acknowledge everyone to show our appreciation for um um doing their presentation to, uh, for being brave enough no and this all the papers no, are very uh nice and uh and uh, they are all qualitative researches and as we know when doing qualitative research that's kind of challenging huh? so um again i'd like to acknowledge the uh, faez gerald aristi dana muhammad and inamol okay so uh, thank you very very much for um taking the challenge for uh, uh having this uh, pre presentation on the third international conference on islamic education studies and social science no having uh, um six tracks no political science no international relations social science islamic studies and sustainable development i'm sorry for that five tracks and six presenters no so at this point i'm going to turn um in the floor no the virtual floor to santi again thank you very very much for everybody thank you uh, also for those who ask questions no thank you very very much and good okay. afternoon good afternoon so thank dr you, joyce thank yes. you uh, keep so. healthy there Dr. Joyce, before before that, I would like to invite you to again to give awarding the certificates yes. to all the presenters. 
Okay. So we will show the certificate and then you can congratulate them on behalf of ours. Okay. Um, so uh, to start with, we have now the certificate for presenters. All right. So a uh, certificate of presentation. This uh, certificate is uh, presented to Faes Sharoni. Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta for the manuscript entitled Government Policy in uh, Dealing with Forest Fire Case Study at uh, Aceh Province presented on the third International Conference on Islamic Education, Studies and Social Science. Can we, uh, Faes, please accept your um, certificate? Okay, next we have another certificate which is uh, presented to <clears throat> Jerome Theodorus Ruan. Okay. The title of his uh, paper is Indonesia Defense Diplomacy Against the United States, China in the South China Sea as an effort to create peace in the region. Please accept it, Gerald. Okay. And the next one is for Arisi Georgi Sutan. No? The paper title is <coughs> Social Media, Climate Change, and Youth Activism Using Social Media in Climate Right Movement. Arisi. We have the manuscript entitled How Indonesian Government Responds to New Normal in Tourism, Promoting Virtual Tourism During the COVID Pandemic, presented to Danang Eko Prastia. Next, we have the papers. Uh, the title of the paper is Study on Early Islamic Engineering presented to Muhammad Takiyuddin. And of course, the last but not the least, the uh, title of the paper is Analysis of Mode of Transportation for Tourism Development, a case study in the Magella, Magella Regency. Central Java presented to Inmul Mustafa and all of the paper, all of the certificates are signed by Professor Pierre A. Um, uh, I cannot uh, uh, signed by the by uh, Professor Harris Newman Harris Newman MP PhD. IPM, the conference chair. Okay, so uh, all of the paper were all signed by our okay. conference chair. Okay. Professor Ira Haritz Numan, MT, PhD, IPM. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Joyce. But before that, before that, I would like also on behalf of the organizing committee, the Research Synergy Foundation, our great um, our great appreciation goes, of course, to you, the session chair of today's conference, Dr. Joycelyn uh, Dyrit from the Holy Angel University of Philippines. So once again, thank you so much, Dr. Joyce, for your command feedbacks and your valuable insights to all of us today. Thank you so much and glad to have you here. Thank you, thank you. And this is the e-certificate for you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so now we almost reach at the end of the today's presentations. But before we close our agenda today, I would like to give you uh, these special sessions. This is the setting sessions. So this uh, particular sessions is uh, intended to give the to share your experience to 
to all of the scholars around around the globe because later on this recording also we will put that in our social media and and also our youtube so everyone can see again this research uh, presentations and by this opportunity so i would like to invite mr muhammad takiuddin is you still here because he, uh, he has been giving a lot of questions also to all of the presenters so mr muhammad takiuddin can you share to us how you feel about today's conference? Yes. What yeah, so is, this is uh, yeah, this is the time to share your experience actually. Uh, thanks for the time. I would like to talk that this conference is managed by professionally. Uh, almost from the beginning is uh, <clears throat> participation on, on the orientation of this uh, conference may be a good and from me uh, I will um, maybe join the next <laughs> participation of the fourth uh, conference of Islamic education. I wait this agenda, thanks. <laughs> okay, thank you so much uh, Mr. Takiudin. So hopefully uh, all of us also can learn together yeah, during this uh, scientific forum because our intention is uh, to have that kind of atmosphere, good learning environment and also sharing environment. Okay, so once again, thank you so much to all the presenter who already presenting the research paper and also to our honorable and also beloved session chair, Dr. Joyce. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's move on to our final. Again, this is another reminding regarding the post-conference information. So please, please kindly see and also aware about the timeline of the publications because you need to send your full paper after revisions. So you already have a feedback before the conferences. And also during this uh, conference, which is today, you also already have um, a uh, you already have a suggestion or maybe a recommendations for today conference. You can consider to put that uh, to improvement on your paper. And then you can send your full paper of your revisions at last day plus seven after this conference finish, which is around 13 July. So by that, by that, uh, on behalf of the Research Synergy Foundations, so I would like to say thank you for all your participations and hopefully we can meet again in our upcoming scientific forum, not only for third ICES, but also for other our scientific forums. So because we will have a lot of scientific forums uh, under our global research ecosystem. So please ensure that you, uh, you can see the schedule on our official website, the researchsynergy.org or the Facebook at Research Synergy and also Instagram, YouTube and etc. So feel free to use these platforms, these research ecosystem platforms to your uh, to your faculty, to your university, or even to yourself. So just please use this kind of platform so you can have a good uh, a good uh, performance. You can have a good contribution also, not only to the academic but also to society because you share the knowledge to others. Thank you so much and have a good day. Please stay safe and also stay healthy. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, everyone. Oh yeah, one more thing, sorry. One more thing, please kindly fill the feedback form, okay? This is the feedback, the feedback form that you can uh, write. So admin, can you, yeah, also. Yeah, already share, yeah, in the chat box for the feedback forms and also the scholar membership forms. Okay, so we will give you a time for you to write in the feedback form and also the scholar membership forms. And then if you already finish in filling the feedback form and also the membership form, feel free also to leave this Zoom room. We still open and because we will give you time to fill this form. Thank you so much.
Thank you, thank you, Dr. Joyce. Bye bye, see you soon. See you, bye. Bye. Congratulations. Thank you.